and welcome to Sweet Home California. Today I'm introducing episode five of Rainbows and Silver Linings, which premieres on Tuesdays over at This Way Network. And then the following week, I have the rerun here on Sweet Home California. And uh, so go ahead and watch this. And uh, at the end of this, uh, the next episode, episode six, should be available up on This Way Network. And that episode will be with Nina from Southern Digest. And uh, so go ahead and check that out as well. And I will have the link uh, included in the description as soon as it's available. Hello and welcome to Rainbows and Silver Linings. My name is Jennifer. And uh, today I've got a great guest that is going to teach us a little bit of something. And uh, I got my guitar here. Uh, if that gives you a hint, um, my my guest's name is Donald Riddell, and uh, I just know him as the guy who is always adding positive comments to all of my live streams. But we're going to get to know him a little bit better here today on Rainbows and Silver Linings. And just to tell you a little bit about the show, the whole purpose of Rainbows and Silver Linings is that you know we we want to take a look at the positive side. And uh, there's so much on YouTube that's politics and doom and gloom, and um, you know the world is coming to an end. We're just going to put that aside today and we're going to have some positivity. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring on Donald. Hello, how are you? Hi Jen, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I might notice those that have watched the show before, I think this is our fifth episode. Normally I have the um, the, the portrait uh, images so that you know we, we show up a little bigger, but today we're in landscape mode and yep. that's so we can jam a little bit here with our guitars. That's right. And if anybody at home has a guitar that they want to pull out and, and jam along with us, that's, that's more, you know, more than welcome to have those people do that. Uh -huh. so, so tell me, why are we bringing out the guitars today? Oh, because like you said, um, there's so much uh, nasty stuff going on out in the world. And, and uh, we, we just need to uh, you know, kind of go to a place where where there's nothing going on except what you can produce through an instrument, maybe, you know. Um, you know, when, when, I, when I was growing up, I spent at least a half hour in my room just picking up the guitar and, and practicing. And mm -hmm. so, and then I went on to, you know, playing professionally for um, about 40 years. And, um, you know, made a, a decent living at it. And, you know, now I'm retired, uh, a retired bus driver. I, I drove a bus for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, that, that during that time, uh, about three years into to driving bus, I was like, oh, this crowd on the bus needs to be livened up a little bit. <laughs> so I started bringing my guitar and I became known uh, up in Maine because my route was from Concord, New Hampshire, down to Boston, mm. and then up to Bangor, Maine. I became famous um, in Maine uh, as the singing bus driver. Now, how do you go about driving a bus and playing guitar at the same time? How's that no, work? No, no. Yeah, that's what the, <laughs> the owner of the company was like, how the hell do you do? No, I, yeah, I drive with my knees, you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, uh, before I get, got going, I, I would announce, so oh, there's a bathroom in the back of the bus, the movie's going to start in just a second, but but first, there's a song, and I, I go like this, here's a quick song for you. This is the shortest song in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to go. <laughs> Take the guitar away. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go. All right. Yeah. Well, that, that should liven everything up. But have you have you heard some of these um, uh, airport? Um, you know, the, the pilots will will have some spiel that they do. You know, before they go off, and you know, the ones that are memorable are the ones that are funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I did, and uh, you know, they wanted to stick me on the news from time to time. And, uh, you know, people were always coming up. To, You're the singing bus driver. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so you said when I said so you're 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 famous or something. You said well you're almost famous. So yeah. so what was your what was your career before you were doing the bus driver? 
Oh, geez, I've done for a day job. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done just about everything out there. <laughs> it's like a, a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, mm -hmm. But I always did. I always had a day job for the benefits, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, I sang just about every weekend, uh, either, you know, singing at weddings or um, restaurants and, and parties and bar mitzvahs, you, you name it, you know, I, mm -hmm. wherever they wanted to pay me, I'd, I'd go and sing. <laughs> You know, so um, did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, and uh, so in terms of like guitar playing, so what kind of um, role has guitar had in your life? Oh, like, you know, like I said, when I was younger, it was just, it was a great escape to go mm -hmm. in, into my room and, and just play. Uh, I've got a twin brother, identical twin brother. And when he was learning how to play he would go like this and if i if you saw me watching his fingers he would pull it away like this <laughs> no nope, i don't want you to see <laughs> you know so i had to learn i literally had to learn on my own uh -huh. and, and i i got so i got I, I i had a good ear uh -huh. so i tried to remember the chords that he was playing because he wouldn't show me <laughs> and i i go in my room and oh that sounds good yeah so basically, my my tra my self training was was by ear, mm -hmm. and whatever sounds good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started picking up, uh, you know, like Simon and Garfunkel books and and uh, James Taylor. I don't know if James Taylor's famous out where you are. I've heard no? the name. <laughs> okay, um, but he's he's very famous back here in New England. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Eagles America, James Taylor, Cat Stevens, Dan Fogelberg, um, you know, the people from the, the 60s, 70s, the Beatles, you know, mm -hmm. um, so I just started getting a hold of these, um, music books, one after the other, mm -hmm. and whatever song I wanted to learn, I, they'd show you the, how they had to, how to do the chords and, and it was, it was pretty, pretty easy, you know, but mm -hmm. it just took a lot of time. So yeah, and it, and there is that that um, when you're first starting out, it hurts your fingers. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I yeah, see but, it. Yeah. You know, and for it me, hurts. it's been it's been a long time since I've broken out this guitar. Um, in fact, this is actually I think my husband's guitar. I don't know what happened to mine when in the move. It yeah. it might not have might not have made it. But um, I did, my dad uh, was in a folk group, so he had a guitar and he had a, a Martin, a, you know, really nice Martin that's nice. in a nice hard case. That's and a nice um, guitar. Yeah, yeah. And it, it sounds great. And he was in a, a folk music, um, so I would listen to that and he would play the guitar all the time. And uh, so I kind of learned, wanted to learn because of that. And, um, you know, I did take a class in guitar to learn a little bit more. But since then, you know, life kind of gets a hold of everything and I just don't don't have the time so i just this is the only thing i remember and you helped me earlier with uh getting the thing tuned up again i don't know if yeah. it's held it sounds like it's all right <laughs> i can't remember anyhow hey. you know how, you know what i was trying to do make it sound good <laughs> yeah no that's that's melaguena uh-huh um I, I was playing that right before we got on this this uh, stream here. Uh, I was actually because it's a good it's a good uh, tune to to you know practice through to get your fingers uh, limber. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I taught my son how to play that and, and he, he still can play it, but he can't really play much else, you know? <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, just, just like that's really... the one thing I remember. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. If, so, I so just you're go gonna... by, if, if, if the chord doesn't sound good, don't play it ever again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, it just means that your, your, um, your strings may be out of tune. Oh yeah, that's that too. Like I used to, 
Well, we're going to play a song. Uh, here, here's a song. With... <laughs> uh! <laughs> Sounds like you're off by a half a fret or something. Yeah, you're, yeah your finger's <laughs> going to be in the right place. So it, it really is awful. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so I understand that uh, you're going to be coming on the This Way Network to feature the guitar, right? Yeah. It's going to be your basic guitar lessons, you know, uh, going through chords and and um, you know maybe some chromatic scales, uh, pentatonic scales, simple mm -hmm. blues scales. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what the chat says. You know, if people want a certain thing, um, I'm not I'm not one to play an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. If you want that, there's there's tons of other. And maybe we can get somebody to do a, a you know just electric guitar and. And then have somebody for bass and, and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. but as far as just acoustic guitar, you want to play some folk songs or whatever, I'm your man. Well, that sounds great. I am really looking forward to it. I will, um, now that I've got this out, I will try and toughen up these fingers again so I can play something yeah. that sounds halfway decent. Yeah, you got to turn these into, uh, from, from pillows to rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, what is your favorite genre of music? I mean, playing uh, classical guitar. Um, do you, do you like to listen to other things as well? Yeah, uh, basically easy listening, soft rock. I like I like all kinds of music. Um, lately, I've been into a lot of uh, Christian worship music. Um, I'm I'm leading, help leading a uh, worship team at church, and you know, we have uh, guitar, keyboards, bass player, drums, um, and some tremendous harmonies. Just fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really what I'm doing now. Now that I'm retired, I just, you know, my, it's like going out to sing is, is kind of strange for me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's one thing, you know, to be singing and have people's attention. But if they're eating and, you know, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> your background music and somebody goes hey that was great and then you realize they were they were talking to the tv because you know, the ball game was on oh that's they're like that's clapping and do... i'm like thank you that does and something to oh, your it ego doesn't it, it? For me. <laughs> <laughs> dang it <laughs> yeah we have a uh, a restaurant here uh called guido's and every so often we're there at the same time that they have a, a live person either singing or playing or something like that. And yep. um, that I really, en really enjoy that because it just, you know, I don't know. It just makes your day to, to hear some, some live music. At least it does for me. And I'm sure yep. that's the reason why they keep bringing them on is that uh, and we had like an Elvis impersonator. Um, that person was really good. Sounded just like Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Have you done any impersonations like that? Cover, cover oh, songs? Oh, yeah, but nothing serious. No. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get involved with the, the This Way Network? Because as I said, I you know, I, my first introduction to you was um, encouraging people to comment on and like and, and subscribe to, the, to my channel. I started watching YouTube. I'd never really done that before. And... Um, and I started picking up on these certain characters. Uh, they're all gone now, by the mm -hmm. way. They're all, they've all been booted off because they're telling the truth, you know? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. And so, um, but there was this one guy um, from uh, Sweet Home Maricopa. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and he just kept coming on, you know, one show after another mm -hmm. and I subscribed. So every time he came on, I'd be like, okay, what's he going to talk about now? Uh -huh. And it was, it could have been nothing or, or, or something or, or, you know, mostly having something to do with what was going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I became intrigued and, um, and I had become involved on my own here in New Hampshire with the New Hampshire voter integrity group. And the, and the Government Integrity Project, um, both basically culminating from uh, like Wyndham, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> so whenever I wasn't watching my grandchildren, I would get in my car and I'd go to, to Wyndham and I'd get involved. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I, I, I volunteered to, to do some live video at one of the, one of the events with, um, a certain YouTuber mm -hmm. and the thing went viral and, uh, you know, I, I went from, I, I had a YouTube channel that I had started up. I just had three videos on there and I had seven subscribers. And in one week, it went from seven to 1,007. Wow. Because, because these guys that I was watching at the time were saying, go check this guy out. He sings songs. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is incredible. Yeah, so, it certainly, it certainly does help, um, get you, get you off the ground when you've got some, some friends that are already, um, there and uh, they yeah. can help point you in that direction. And that's similar to my story as well, is that I, I kind of took the challenge, uh, from Michael and yeah. named my channel, Sweet Home California and, and kind of went from there, went from zero to, to 3000 and in, in less than six months. So, yeah, yeah. I was thinking that if I get around to it, you know, if I were, you know, start with this guitar show or something, maybe I could turn it into Sweet Home, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got to get my computer going. My computers can't figure it out, but we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Um, cause I, I, I have so much to report on mm -hmm. from, from here, you know, mm -hmm. just like, just like all the other people out there that are reporting on their state, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on behind the scenes and, yeah, well, I'm really glad to, to hear you getting involved with it. I just got my my notice here to uh, be an election poll worker again for the primary in California. So that's going to be in June. And yeah, um, and yeah I just encourage, it, no matter where you are in the United States, contact your local county because that's where you sign up to be a poll watcher or a poll worker rather. Um, and just volunteer to be there because the more of us that are out there, the less opportunity there is for things that may may not be the proper procedures, uh, less chance for that to happen, the more people that are out there watching. And, um, you know, when I, I was the new person, when I went, I was there at the polls um, for the recall election and everybody else that was there had been doing this for years. They all knew each other. They were, you know, friends and, and here I am joining in. Well, you know, when you got a small click that they all know each other, that's when people start getting sloppy. That's when they start not paying attention to what all the different procedures are. You know, the more people, different people, you don't know this person, you know what, I better be on the straight and narrow and make sure I'm, what I'm doing is, is correct. You know, so I'm just encourage everybody to, to sign up and be that extra eyes and ears out there in all the different polls for the, both the primaries and of course the general that'll be coming up in November. That's right. It, and it's just a matter of people getting out, you know, it's amazing that the different skills that people have, like data entry, uh, mm -hmm. you know, editing mm -hmm. stuff, stuff that I had little, little to, to no experience, but they trained me how to mm -hmm. do it, you know, when they were putting movies together and, uh, so forth and so on. And she, and I, I find myself, you know, you don't have to do this, but I, when I left uh, my ho house, it would be about maybe seven o'clock at night. And then I, I get home around two in the morning because I just kept going at it, you know, and thinking, okay, what, what else, what else is there for me to do? And, and I was always given something. So mm -hmm. if you just go and make yourself available, mm -hmm. um, that there is something for you to do out there. Yeah. So. There are certain automation programs that are out there. And I know that there's a lot of people who believe that we shouldn't have these automation programs. Um, but the alternative to the automation is having people out there. And yeah. we, we were shorthanded. Uh, the number of people that we were supposed to have, even with me being new on there, we were down one person. And that was just that one precinct. And that is like throughout the county. And that's with automation. How can you expect your county to give up those, those autom that automation, if you don't have the people to backfill that, you know, we'd never get anything done. So yeah. 
just consider this to be a sign that you need to sign up with your local county and and be the alternative. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I, I did was I covered the uh, the audit um, here in New Hampshire for, for Wyndham. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I I got to a point at because I, I came out like maybe three times out of the, I don't know, it was like 14 days that the audit went on. And I actually got to know one of the auditors. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, like, if he was having lunch, I'd say, hey, can I, can I interview you in the hallway? He goes, mm -hmm. sure. I would be able to ask him questions in the hallway and, you know, have all those interviews with him. And, you know, there, I think part of what, you know, is going on in the world, I think it's really encouraging people to become more involved. Like for instance, um, the school boards, I've heard that there's a lot of new people getting involved in the political process because of things happening with CRT and just encourages more people to be involved. And, yeah. um, you know, sometimes when we're talking national level, people think they're so small, they can't make a difference, but, you know, you can. And I think, you know, just being part of YouTube and, uh, you know, networking with people, help them helping you get a leg up and get, get your voice out there. Um, you know, those are all, all silver linings, uh, that yeah. we have here. Yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've been really encouraged, uh, for the number of people that are involved in trying to make a difference and, and that's a good thing. So can I show you something on the guitar? Yes, please. All right. So, um, we have, uh, fret one, mm -hmm. fret two. And fret three, we're going to deal with the first two. Okay. Okay. And we're going to take the number one finger, the uh -huh. index finger. We're going to put it on the fourth string down. Okay. And that that's a G string. Uh huh. And then and then your middle finger is going to go on the second fret. Mm hmm. On the second string down. Mm hmm. And then your third finger is going to go just below it. Okay. And that's the D string. So if you strum that, hold it tight. Go ahead. That's an E. That's an E chord. Okay. All right. And that was in that song, Melaguania. Yes. Because you start with with the E chord, and then you can do all the. <laughs> And then it's got an F in there too. And, um, but I wanted to show something while we're here with the E chord structure, because you have, you have that E chord structure. Right now, the, the middle fingers, um, it's in the second fret. Yes. So if you use the middle finger as a guide and you put, let's say you slide that same structure, don't move the structure, but just slide it down. So your middle fingers in the fifth fret. Uh, Slide it right down. And it just changes the sound. Yeah. Now, if you, if you go down one or towards, towards the, the tuning machine. I don't think I'm in the right spot. It's actually like your middle fingers in the fourth fret. Okay. Yeah, I am. It what doesn't do sound, it doesn't sound right though. Okay. Go down to the third fret. Third. I, say, I say down, but towards the tuning machine. And then back down to where the E is supposed to be. Back down. Right here. Yeah. So there's a part of the song goes. Olay! <laughs> Olay! <laughs> <laughs> 
but you you know th that's how i i learned how to play guitar is just taking a structure and knowing that that you have this whole neck to play with and so i came up with um some some really nice um chords with that same structure that really sound nice so i'll just play a couple of them okay structure mm -hmm. and then of course something that people don't really know or understand is that the distance between this nut the white thing mm -hmm. and the nut up here there's got to be a middle point right mm -hmm. the middle point is usually where you find um let me see two there's two there should be two fret markers no right mine are there. mine are blank right oh, okay yeah. you have a cheapo guitar <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah el cheapo <laughs> um so that's the halfway point and that's where you can get a perfect vibration from nut to nut so it's like uh -huh. it goes the, what i call chimes So you're getting a perfect halfway point vibration. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, a quarter of the way right here on the fifth fret. So that's breaking breaking the, the halfway point into another quarter. Mm -hmm. And then you have the thirds on the seventh fret. So music is mathematical. It is. I've heard it that, that that you know people who study music they they do better in math. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good at math. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So that's but, yeah. that's uh, that's uh, that that's pretty much what we're going to be covering in the show. So. Okay. Well, I think that's great, and I I hope that there will be people that'll be tuning in. I certainly will be because, as I said, you know I. I did really enjoy playing it. I've just let it go so long. It's kind of like, you know, where do you begin again? So, so anyhow, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show today, Don. Sure. And, uh, Anytime. When, when is that the show going to premiere? Do you know, do you have a date on that yet? Uh, next Tuesday. What's next Tuesday? That's, that's fourth or seventh. Or, uh, what is, what is the date next Tuesday? It'll be the fifth. Fifth plus seven is 12. 12. 12. Yeah. So okay. the 12th. We'll see you there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. I guess we will we will uh, end it here, and we will pick it up then next week on uh, April 12th, and I'll be sure to comment on there and break out my guitar. Hopefully, my, my new string that I just put on there will be finished um, stretching out, because I think it was getting out of tune again while we were waiting here. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, God bless, Don. I appreciate it, and we will see you next you time. Thanks, Jen. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching episode five of Rainbows and Silver Linings, where we talked with Don Rydell. Um, next up is going to be my uh, episode six of Rainbows and Silver Linings, and it's going to be over on This Way Network exclusively till next week. So if you'd like to catch up on that real quick, we talk about freedom of speech, and I will have the link in the description below as soon as it's available. But go on over to This Way Network. Thanks.